This lesson is about um, distributing variables. We've already learned about the distributive property, and an example of the distributive property might look something like this. If you had a question with a 2 and then a bracket, uh, x plus 5, something like that. Uh, what we've learned before is that the distributive property means that you would multiply the terms inside these bracket, this set of brackets, by 2. So we're multiplying because the, the operation that is in between the 2 and the bracket right in there is multiplication. And so this uh, inside the brackets, there's nothing that we can do. We can't combine like terms. So we would multiply 2 times x, which is 2x, and 2 times 5, which is 10. Um, and so that's just an example of what we've learned already. What we're going to do now is learn how to distribute variables. Distributing variables, uh, it just means we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to use the distributive property, except there's going to be a lot more letters in our question. Um, <clears throat> we learned the other day that x times x, if I'm looking um, right in here, x times x is x squared. So we're still going to imagine that we're multiplying by what is outside the brackets. This time it's an x though, and we're going to multiply what's inside the brackets by x. So you have to remember the exponents get larger when you multiply variables together. So x times x is x squared, and x times negative 3 is negative 3x. Okay, so that one's hopefully not too bad. Multiplication all the time. Sometimes we make mistakes when we start going back to adding, uh, but this is definitely a multiplication question. Another way of e explaining it is that we're expanding. Sometimes teachers will say expand, and that just means can you write this expression without any brackets? So we're going to expand uh, and use the distributive property to remove the brackets. So we have to, to ask what is 2a times 3a? Not 2a plus a, 2a times 3a. 2 times 3 is 6, so if you want to do it a little bit separately, you can. 2 times 3 is 6, a times a is a squared. Okay, so, oops, that's a 2, doesn't look very good. Um, and then the second part, 2a times negative 4. Well, 2 times negative 4, that's a positive 2 and a negative 4, that's negative 8. So we get minus 8, and then there is an a right out here, but there isn't an a with the 4. So we know that there will still be 1a here left. So the answer is 6a squared minus 8a. Uh, the next one, if we multiply by negative m, that's a negative sign, just like a negative 1. So we don't usually write the 1 in, but we're going to multiply both terms inside the brackets by negative 1m. So negative 1 times negative 4, or sorry, negative 1 times 4 is negative 4, and m times m is m squared. And then negative 1m times negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. So I'm going to get positive 1m as my final part of this question. I would probably just write that as positive m. You can write in the 1 before the m if you like, but we often just assume um, <clears throat> that we know that counts as 1m, so we probably wouldn't show the m very often. So negative 1m times 4m is negative 4m squared. Negative m times negative 1 is positive m. Remember that you cannot go any further with these questions because you can't add an m squared term with an m term. You can't add an x squared term with an x term. They are not like terms. Um, a lot of students, the big mistake they make is that they keep going and they want to make this into negative 2 something. They want to put these numbers together, uh, but you can't. 6a squared minus 8a, not like terms. They do not go together. You're done. You have to know when you're done sometimes. So this is the first one here that it's going to get a little bit more tricky. x squared. <clears throat> We're going to multiply the terms on the inside of the bracket by x squared. So 
what we have to notice is this x squared times this 2x, that means there's two x's outside and another one inside. So when I multiply that entire, uh, these two terms together, I would have, really there's a 1 out front, so 1 times 2, that's 2. I'd have 2x to the third because I have an x squared on the outside and this counts as x to the first. So you add up the variables. The second part of this, we'd have to take x squared times negative 5. Negative 5 times 1, really, is just negative 5x squared. So the x squared follows it. There are no more x terms following the 5, but there was an x squared outside. So it is multiplied by the negative 5. Okay, and then <clears throat> let's just do a few more. Hopefully this is making sense. Um, we're multiplying by a p. What that really means is each one of these terms is going to end up getting an extra p. So I want to add an extra p to each term. So the first term, p times p squared, that's p to the third, because there's three all together. That's a three. There we go. And then p times negative 2p, that's negative 2p squared, because now we have two p's all together. And then p times 1. 1 times p is just 1p. So we would just write plus p. You'd be done at this point because a p to the third term and a p squared term and a p term, they are all not like terms, so nothing can be combined together and you're finished. Um, f, same thing as the p's, we're going to add an extra x to every single term. I like writing this like this every time so that you can kind of remember what it is you need to do. Uh, you'd have 3x to the third plus 8x squared minus 11x. Oops. I'm doing this on a tablet, so it's a little, my writing's not that, not that clear. Anyways, um, <clears throat> the last couple here, let's just finish it off. There, we're going to multiply all the terms inside the bracket by 2t. So that means every single number gets multiplied by 2 and all of the terms gain an extra t when you multiply. So 2 times 4 is 8 and t times t squared is t to the third because there was 1 out here and there's 2 inside so that's 3 all together. The second one, 2 times negative 8, that's negative 16. So I'm still just at this term here. t and another t, so that's t squared. And then 2t times negative 1 is negative 2t. And you're done. Um, last one, we're going to multiply all the terms inside the brackets by negative 3x. So multiply the numbers by negative 3 and add an x to every term. So negative 3, this is just like there's a 1 there. So negative 3 times 1, that's negative 3, x to the third. So that's the first term done. Negative 3 times negative 2, that's positive 6. Okay, so negative, that's positive 6. There's an x outside, there's an x inside, so that's x squared. And then negative 3x times 5. Negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. Remember, a positive and a negative, that's a negative. And then there's just this extra x. There's an x out here. There aren't any inside, but still, that means the negative 15 has to have that x. And again, no like terms here. x to the third, x squared, x. You can't put any of those numbers together. You can't put any of the terms together, and you're done.